Hi, the purpose of this video is to cover chapter one, data and statistics. What is statistics? The statistics can be refer referred to as numerical facts, averages, mediums, percents, means, maximum, maximum, minimum values to help us understand a variety of business and economic situations. Statistics can also be referred to the art of science of collecting, analyzing, presenting and interpreting data. And throughout the chapters, we will be doing that. Let's talk, let's skip to this slide here. We'll talk about on page six, data sources. Data sources, data is facts and figures collected, analyzed and summarized for presentation and most importantly, interpretation. All the data in particular studies refer to a data set. We have elements, which are entities we collect data about. We have variables, these are characteristics. And then we have a particular element known as an observation, okay? So if we look for this example, here's the data set example. We have our elements, which is our nation. This is again an example of nations. Here we have five nations, which means we have five observation or rows. Think of Excel, you have rows and columns. So you usually have like a key field. This is nation. You may have a student ID, for example, as a key field. An employee ID is a key field. A product ID is a key field. Then you have variables. This explains the WTO status, per capita GDP, Finch rating. These are your columns. Again, look at this. Look at this. It says, hey, you know, this is like Excel. Okay. Again, elements are key. Key. We have a key field, and then we have observations. We can. We have five in this example. We got five thousand. Okay. Variables are our rows and our variables are our columns. Page eight depicts the difference between qualitative categorical data and quantitative data. Think of categorical data as a label or name to identify an attribute of an element. Okay, so perfect example product color. That's a categorical data. Okay, um, state categorical data. Gender, categorical data. Whereas quantitatives, how much, how many? Balance on hand, revenue, the account balance. Um, those are examples of quantitative data. Page 15, we'll talk about data acquisition considerations. Time requirements. I want you to think about this. Searching for information, yes, can be time consuming. There's two things. How much time is it gonna to take to get the data as well as once you get it, how relevant is it? Do you need the data monthly? Do you need it weekly? Do you need it hourly? hourly? If it's like a point of sale, okay? Like a store, maybe you need daily sales, okay? To see some trends, that would be a perfect example of a timing requirement. Cost of acquisition. How much does the data cost? Do you have to go external? Do I got to purchase this data external or internal? How much cost? How much time? Time is another cost. Time is money. How much cost is it? And I'm going to see data errors, data integrity. Make sure we get the right information, accuracy, quality, integrity. The correct information. We don't want to present misleading information. We'll talk about misleading information in a later chapter. Very important page is page 16. Talks about the types, and we'll call it a scale of measurement, if you would. We have nominal. These are usually labels or names, product color, state of residence, membership status, gender. Those are nominal measurements. Think of the word nominal. No, no math. I can't add blue, red, and green. It's impossible to add those three colors to come up with some kind of a output. Now I can count them. I can count, for example, flavors of ice cream. I have 35 flavors of ice cream in my store. I can count it. I can add chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, cookie dough, okay? Ordinal, this is an order or rank of your data, okay? Can be numerical. Think of letter grades, bond ratings, obviously a movie rating or a restaurant rating, okay? That's an example of ordinal data, it's ordinal order and orders, think of it that way. Interval, um, perfect, perfect example, 
the data has properties of ordinal data, but the interval between each observation is in, expressed in terms of a fixed unit measure, okay? Um, room temperature in Fahrenheit. Miles, your speedometer is another example, okay? That's interval. Your, your volume on the amplifier, okay, goes up to 10, for example, all right? Ratio, easiest one. It's a scale. It starts at zero. Must contain zero, as a matter of fact, as a value, okay? And it could be anything. Distance, miles traveled, height, weight, balance on hand. It's your ratio. We'll be talking about charts primarily in future chapters, but three common charts using descriptive statistics is time series, what happened in the past, identifying trends over time, the time chart. Example, here's the dates, and here's a measurement here, okay? Average price per gallon, right? A bar chart, this is to measure the quantitative data, okay, or category data. So you can have, for example, our flavors of ice cream here on our x-axis, and on our y-axis, we can have our quantity sold, for example, okay? Historians quantitative, a histogram, they call it, okay? Tree trunk diameter, frequency, all right? So as you can see here, the tree trunk diameter of 50 has the most. Maybe they may take a measurement of 100 trees, for example, okay? So we'll cover charts in more later on chapters, but this gives you a synopsis of a few different charts that are properly used in presenting data visually, okay? Let's talk about this one, for example. Let's talk about descriptive statistics. Let's provide an example. The manager of Hudson Auto Repair would like to have a better understanding of the cost of parts used in engine tune-ups performed in her shop. So she examines 50 invoices for tune-ups. So she takes, randomly, she grabs 50 invoices from her invoice, um, invoice folder, okay? And you can see here, here's some different cost of parts, okay? $91. $71, $104, $68, $69, $76, and so on and so forth, okay? So she takes a step back and she says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break it down in intervals here, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, and so on. And she'll count the frequency. How many times did a part cost end up between 50 and $59 on an invoice? Two of them, for example. I see 57 and I see 52, two. Okay, that's your frequency. But notice what happened. She added all these up and it totals 50, and it should. But look what else. I could take two divided by 50, 4%. 13 divided by 50 gives you 26%. So basically what this is saying is, is that my, this is the frequency of occurrences of this range. So here you go. Here's a nice histogram as we showed in the previous slide that if you look here, Look carefully here, it looks like the common cost, the common range of parts is between 70 and $79. She can use this to make decisions. Customer even, in fact, she can use the market her business. A customer calls on the phone saying, hey, I'm looking for a tune-up. How much about in parts will I spend? She could say, yeah, well, the average cost is around between 70 and $79, okay? Good information, not based on guesses, based on facts, okay? We're gonna be using these words a lot throughout our journey in statistics. Population, instead of all the elements of a particular study. The students at a particular college, okay? Sample, a subset of that population. The school of business, for example, okay? Statistical inference means <clears throat> the process of using data to obtain from a sample to make estimates and test hypotheses about the characteristics of a population. So we'll be taking samples of data to run tests, to do analysis, and to make some conclusions based upon that sample, okay? A census, collecting the data for the entire population. United States Census, that's a perfect example, okay? Sampling survey, collecting data, for example, and sur sample, and we'll talk, talk about some survey methods in later chapters, okay? Again, talked about Hudson Auto Repair. This is what they did. The manager said population consists of all tune-ups. They probably do other kind of repairs, but she said 
I want to look at my tune-ups only. She took a sample, pulled 50 invoices from her invoice folder, okay? And she came up with an average cost around $79 per tune-up. Again, good information for her to know, not only for billing appropriately for her customers, but also giving estimates to her customers. Common words lately been used data mining and data warehousing. Let's talk about data mining first, okay? So we're gonna take data, transferring data into insights to make better decisions. That's data mining, that's it's about analytics, okay? So we're talking about types of analysis. We have descriptive analysis. Tells you what happens in the past, okay? We have predictive analysis where we use some models and techniques and use our past data to predict the future, okay? Process assess impacts of variables on one and the other, okay? Think of the weather, our prediction of weather, the five-day forecast, perfect example. The temperatures kind of look the same like unless there's some kind of different weather trend coming, but you usually look in the same range, okay? That's a prediction. And prescriptive analysis, this is saying, hey, think of it like a prescription, a technique to yield the best course of action to take, prescription, prescriptive analysis, okay? Data warehousing, big data, we call it big data, okay? Organizations have large amounts of data on a daily basis, okay? How they determine Manda car readers, barcode scanners, points of, term, points of sale terminals, touch point screen monitors. That's how they obtain data, okay? Sales data. Walmart, 20, 30 million, million transactions per day, probably more now. Visa, amazing, 6,800 payment transactions per, per second. That's a lot of data. Just these two examples here. So you capture and store and maintain the data as long as a data warehouse. That's storing the data. Versus data mining is, is that saying, hey, using a combination of statistics and procedures and math, you're going to mine the data to make it useful information. You know, I could say, hey, for example, Walmart, what's the most popular product sold at this particular area of the country in these particular Walmart stores in these particular months of the year? And maybe I want to stock up that product based upon that analysis. And this is just a summary of chapter one. Again, please review the presentation, but I just uh, point out a few key points of this presentation to you. Thank you very much for watching this video.